Caleb, is that a road you've been on there? It's up on the screen. Looks like a good one to be on. The uh, scripture, I'll give you a moment to turn there if you'd like to, that we'll be looking at this morning is from Galatians 4, 4 through 7. And while you're doing that, uh, let me first of all say thanks for being here today. And I'd echo what was shared about Christmas Eve, about the uh, that special time of being together. And for myself and for my family personally, we thank you so much, not just for that night, but for the year and for the kindnesses and the words and the cards and, and the gifts and the blessing that it is to journey alongside and reminded, especially on times like Christmas Eve, of how special that is. Um, I would echo what Joe said about the, the game other than the outcome, but other than that, it was, a, it was a good thing. But the memory I'd take most with me, I think, from, from the event was actually not from the game itself, but from earlier in the day at, at Kathy's funeral service to see most of the coaches from both teams there and to be reminded that there's a lot more that brings us together, I think, in this community or that can bring us together than, than separate us. So that was the, probably the lasting image to me from the event, events yesterday, excuse me. <clears throat> it has been quite a week, final week of 2017 from Eve to Eve, from Christmas to New Year's now today. Yesterday, if you had the good pleasure of being outside, you noticed that temperature and snow fell side by side with clarity. And it was a breathtaking reminder that for now at least, so do life and death journey together side by side, intermingled, inseparable. We would like, I think especially at Christmas, to somehow have within us the power to gather our friends and our loved ones close around us and prevent any suffering, any evil, to prevent death from, from touching them. We gathered with full hearts on Christmas Eve and full church we celebrated Christ's birth and, and peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Many gathered yesterday with, again, full church, but this time with aching hearts to celebrate a life that's passed from this earth. But in our gathering, we remind each other, whether it was Christmas Eve or yesterday or again today, we remind each other that though the wrong seems off so strong, yet... God is not dead, nor doth he sleep, that the wrong shall fail and the right shall prevail. And gathering is what we do. Christmas calls us together, calls us to gather, calls us to gather at the manger with full and expectant hearts, even while knowing that sometime far too soon we'll gather again at the cross. So in Galatians 4, 4 through 7, we read that when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because we are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so that you know, are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This passage tells us that in this way, we remain eternally, eternally children, children of God, whose childhood has been redeemed so that we might close our eyes and when we open them, it could be any Christmas, not just the one from this year, but maybe years past, maybe all the way back for some of us to childhood. So when you smell the coffee in the morning and you hear the opening and the closing of, of kitchen drawers, it could be your mom setting the table. It could be your dad making that first pot of coffee in the morning. It could be any Christmas. My daughter and I looked through an I Spy Christmas book one evening. 
like we did back when she was eight and, and not 18 like she is today. We look to spy three paper clips, an ornament house, a bottle of glue, and a nutty brown mouse. The only issue is that my eyes are now 10 years older than they were. And under the dimmed lights around the Christmas tree, a bottle of glue looks an awful lot like a mouse to my eyes. I couldn't tell the difference. We decorated cookies with frosting, and sprinkles, and cinnamon imperials, and those little silver balls that look like BBs. And inevitably, one or two or many drop to the floor like they do every year. You hear that dropping sound, ding, 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 ding. So that we will still be finding them in May when we're doing our spring cleaning and we'll be reminded of Christmas. And we're still finding Christmas. Still finding Christ in our hearts as children, this passage tells us. And what that means over the years. When I was little, I would kneel beside my bed and mom or dad would be beside me and I'd pray, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's quite a thought as a child. I like the prayer, but it's quite a thought as a child that, that I might die in my sleep. So when you're small and you think about that, after I was tucked in and, and the lights were turned out, I would add a private conclusion to that prayer. Something I learned from watching baseball, which is kind of in itself like a religion, I would make the sign of the cross after my mom and dad had left. And I did that because I would see hitters do that when they'd step into the batter's box. Since I was in bed and not in the batter's box, I would leave out the part when they then spit on the ground before they hit the ball. Batters make this sign, I suppose, so that they might get a hit, even a home run, or maybe that they don't get hit by a 99-mile-an-hour fastball. I just wanted to wake up in the morning, on Christmas morning especially, and find everything where it should be. To find the tree in the place where it always was, there by the window, gifts underneath, and especially to find people gathered where they should be. Sometimes we gather and people gather who aren't expected, who have sent word that they won't be there this year, that it's just far too busy, there's too much going on. It's too hard to get away, too far to go. The weather forecast is too cold like it is this morning, icy roads and, and just cold. And then as they're out shopping, as they're wandering through the mall, as their child sitting on, the, on Santa's lap and having his picture taken, and it's all jostling and hustle and bustle, something breaks in and they hear a song playing. They hear that old familiar carol play, and unexpectedly it pulls on their heart and those forces of Christmas are exerted. And with tears in their eyes, they determine, you know what, we will go. We will go and gather. And they get in their cars and they drive over windswept highways and they gather. And we gather and we share stories and we eat grandma's homemade anise candy, if you even know what that is anymore. Candy that nobody really likes, but when you open the tin and you see how sparkling red it is and, and it just looks like Christmas, it sort of ter carries the taste of Christmas with it. And we play games, and if we're lucky enough to stay together long enough tonight, we gather and we sing Old Lang Syne, we jump off a chair, maybe pop a cork for some. Some will make sure they stand near that pretty girl so that they can get a New Year's Eve kiss. They won't get it any other time of the year. This week in between Christmas and New Year's, it's, it's reflective. You can see that even in the way people came in today. You know, we're not running in, we're sort of, we're a little hesitant, we're maybe a little bit late, because we're just, we're introspective, and it should be that way today. It's that time to think, and hold the year, and, and maybe more, in, in review. 
Some have already traveled back from what was to what is in their lives, and they're already blasting forward and and going full speed towards that. And for some, this is a time that has us decide in one way or another whether or not we will continue to gather and what that means in our lives. It's a time for some to say, no more. I'm done gathering. That it's not worth the headache. It's not worth the heartache. It's too painful. It's not worth the messy house and the mounting bills. It's not worth the recurring fruitcake. Christmas present is so painful a reminder of Christmas past that some folks do not see Christmas future and they do not gather. A time we put away once and for all, some of us, that book of I Spy, since our vision's so blurred we can't make anything out, can't find the ornament house. And for some of us, it's a time when we put away the book of hope and say, I'm not going to open that anymore because my vision is so blurred and, and I've been so wounded that I can't find the house of God. I find no peace. Fullness of time has become heaviness of time. Tedium of time, time left unredeemed, empty, and yet we read in Galatians 4, in fullness of time, God sent his Son. God sent his Son so that we would gather. God sends his Spirit to our hearts, it says, so that we cry, Father, as children. Children who lay ourselves down to sleep. Children who awake by God's grace and live by God's mercy. That if we are his children, then we are God's heirs. And we continue to come. We come to light candles. We awake to smell mom's cooking. We meet to hear stories and to tell our own and to share laughter and who come to feel hopeful. Our Lord has come to rescue us from that dullness of spirit, to waken us up. It's like the angel came to Joseph and said, Joseph, do not fear. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. To the shepherds, do not be afraid to go forward into life, to go to Bethlehem and see what is to come, what has happened there. Christmas morning, our family gathered around the tree and our youngest son said to me, Dad, did you open your underwear drawer this morning? Not the usual Merry Christmas that you might expect. (laughs) I said that I hadn't, and now you know something about my Christmas morning hygiene, probably more than you care to. (laughs) Then I forgot about that comment and went on about the important business of eating Christmas brunch and opening gifts. It wasn't until later that I did open that drawer to hear jingle bells, jingle bells playing, and then I knew exactly why he had asked. It's because he had placed a motion device deep in the bottom of the drawer that every time I'd open it, there goes the song and the music playing. And I thought, you know, I'm going to leave that in there. So... Now, whenever I open that underwear drawer, which I promise is at least once a week, (laughs) I'll be reminded. I'll be reminded that it's important to gather. I'll be reminded that God's Spirit still calls us, often when we don't expect it and we forget, and the song speaks to us out of nowhere, that God still calls us as His children. Spirit still speaks to our hearts. Today, as you opened your bulletin, or as some of you did, as I did, it was upside down. And I kind of like that. And I especially like the note, because I always have a bulletin left on on the desk in the office. And I just want you to hear this note, because it spoke to me in what I hope to share today. It says, yikes, some of the paper... The bulletin paper was wrong in the stack, and I didn't want to waste them. Today it was a bulletin, but tomorrow or sometime 
2018, it might be life. That we open it up some morning and it's just upside down. And it's not anything we could have predicted or expected. And we might think, I'm not going to gather anymore because it's, it's not what it was. It's not what I remember. And to all of us, I say, gather. Gather. If it's too hard to gather in thought of what once was, gather in hope of what will be, of what we are promised in Christ. Gather so that we do not waste what is the relationships that we have today that we're blessed with. I invite you to close your eyes this morning. And you may take plenty of other time to do this, or maybe not. Maybe this is the time today or as, as the year closes even for you to look at, at life or at the year in review. And to know that God's still calling. That God still speaks. That God sent His Son so that we might receive Him as children. And because we are children, God sends His Spirit into our hearts so that we cry out from wherever we are today, Father, and He hears us. And we become His heirs through Christ. God, I thank you for this time to gather. I thank you for this people to gather with on times when we celebrate in great joy and at times where we shed tears together because we gather as your people. We gather on this Christmas And we gather on every Christmas to come because we know we will gather for eternity with Christ as our Savior. We thank you for that gift in his name. Amen.